Did you know stable coins are not always stable? In fact, there's one stable coin called UST. This was a stable coin that was created by Bernie Luna. But this Luna token actually turned from being worth $100, actually more than $100, it was about $120, into less than a penny in about three days. Should you buy it? Is it a good investment? Well, I think you should look into the full video before you make any decisions. In today's KuCoin DigiDive, we're gonna talk about Luna. What happened? What can we learn from this? And how can we do better? If you guys would like to get started trading on KuCoin, there's a link in the description below. It'll give you 20% off trading fees. This is a quick summary. I'll get into the detailed summary on what happened, but basically this is what happened yesterday. This is, they're claiming Citadel. Now, we don't know 100%, um, but these are just, there's two different wallets involved with this. Citadel is uh, basically a hedge fund that's like with Robinhood and all kinds of garbage, but it's basically just trade fine. So Citadel borrows $100,000 in BTC. They trade 25 BTC for UST. So when you trade BTC for UST, this automatically lowers the price of BTC because you're putting a sell on it, especially $25,000 worth. And remember, they're borrowing in this. So technically they're shorting that. So this opens a short. Now they start dumping 75,000 Bitcoin aggressively, which further depreciates the price. But remember they got UST, they just put a bunch into it. So it kind of already juiced the price of UST. So once BTC reached $30,000, they start dumping UST. Now when they're dumping this UST, this actually decreases the peg on UST because when you put sell pressure on stable coin or regular coin, any coin, red button means go down, green button means go up. So you already have the weakened Bitcoin and now you have additional weakening on UST because you're now dumping your UST, which will lose its peg. So now Do Kwan is forced to sell additional Bitcoin at a loss to recover the peg, which further depreciates the price of Bitcoin. And remember, this was being shorted based on this. So you have this reflexive loop that occurs. Let me go ahead and give you guys the full thread so you guys can see kind of how this works. So this is from OnChain Wizard. It's how to make $800 million in crypto attacking the third largest stable coin. Yeah, even Yellen was uh, chatting about this um, USD basically losing peg. The story starts in March when LFG started buying Bitcoin to help back UST. So this was automatically playing their cards and showing their hand saying, hey, look, we're gonna use Bitcoin to help back the peg. So this is the very first factor on the attack. You have Bitcoin which Bitcoin also determines all the other altcoins and the rest of the market. So please notate this. The second leg comes in the form of the four pool announcement from UST on April 1st. This is very important because this is needed to execute the strategy. So the average price that Luna got the Bitcoin was around 42K. And obviously you guys saw it peaked or went below 30K yesterday. It was actually around 29 something. So they have a 4.2 billion dollars short position that is built so the attacker has built the one billion dollar otc position in ust so they have the ust they have the bitcoin ready they're ready to deploy so let's go and explain the next crucial part everything's set up they got the ust they got the bitcoin but now we need illiquidity to be able to move the market this is where the withdrawal comes into play Luna Foundation removes $150 million from the three pool liquidity so they can move it to the next pool, which is the four pool that launches. So the liquidity was pooled on 5.8 and then the attacker uses the $350 million of UST to drain the curve liquidity. So they do this by depositing the UST and taking out the other assets, which further drives down the peg. And then on top of that, Luna also withdrew another $100 million of liquidity for the Frax 4 pool. But this only starts the depegging and the lows around this time was around 97 cents. So now this is the time where Do Kwan, he needs to protect the peg. So what happens? Well, you have to sell Bitcoin. And when you start selling Bitcoin, this causes the downward price action on Bitcoin. 
So the curve liquidity is drained. The attacker used the rest of the UST in order to drain the curve pool and then start offloading on Binance. Then now on top of this, you have other market participants seeing the UST losing its peg. So they want to withdraw from Anchor, Anchor and they also sell UST, which further takes a hurt on the UST peg. The Luna Foundation Guard selling Bitcoin. The attacker also selling Bitcoin to short it. And then you have other market participants that are selling their UST to get out of UST. Now, everyone's panicking. Everyone's like, what the snap? How much Bitcoin is going to be sold? And everyone is just dumping everything. Now, this also doesn't help. On top of this, we also have all the liquidations happening on Kajura, which further causes price depreciation. And then there was even a DDoS attack on the chain, which actually slowed it even further to create more liquidations. So basically it was a perfect storm that was created to take UST off peg. Now time will tell, we'll see what happens if it's able to go back on peg. But do remember one thing about UST. The Luna Foundation Guard still does have that Bitcoin on reserve. It also has some AVAX. Now the Luna Foundation Guard does still have some assets on the balance sheet. They have $398 million in USDC. 64 in USDT, 1.5 billion just about in Bitcoin, and they also have some avalanche on the balance sheet. So Luna is not the only asset that is backing UST. In fact, Luna doesn't even back UST. It's just used to create stability for UST. You burn $1 worth of Luna to mint $1 worth of UST and vice versa. Now you guys have a little bit of information on what happened. I don't know exactly who it was, 100%. And I'm sure there are some people out there, but I'm not going to say, oh yeah, it was this, or oh yeah, it was this person. I'm sure we'll find out pretty soon. But either way, it is definitely coordinated. And then on top of this, you had a bunch of Twitter FUD. I'm talking a lot of FUD. Now on top of all that FUD, there was a bunch of salt out there on Twitter and a lot of people, were, there was just a lot of hate, man. It was, it was, it was kind of disheartening to see on the crypto space yeah, I mean, I know some people are like, oh, I told you so, I told you so, I, I told you it was going to, like, dude, calm down. The guy is, or the, there are people laying on the floor, aka they sold their house, they leveraged everything into Luna, which I'm not going to get into the irresponsibility of that, but dude, the guy is laying on the floor. Don't go kick him in the nuts. I mean, you don't know. That guy could be sitting there with a gun to his head sending out a last tweet and then you just give him that push to go bang. And then it's just like, dude, come on, just be that person who's like, hey man, if you ever need to talk, I got your back. We really don't understand how words affect people. But if you guys are out there, I'm here for you. I'm here to help you. I know I didn't lose as much as some of you guys have. I mean, I, I know some people have lost everything. They got liquidated, they lost their house, they lost their car, they lost everything and my heart goes out for you man if you need some help if you need someone to talk to i'm here to help you my heart goes out to you it's tough to take on that loss but you'll get it back your life is more important than money so tldr we had the perfect storm a bunch of salt and in my opinion i kind of look at this situation as like trade fi versus crypto depending on who orchestrated this Time will tell, we'll see what happens. I'll give you guys this last piece and then we'll go ahead and close it out. But I want this to sink in. Um, we do have a decentralized asset, which is Bitcoin, but it is not decentralized money. It's not efficient, it's not scalable, but it is a good reserve asset in my opinion, not financial advice. I'm not telling anyone to go buy Bitcoin. I'm not telling anyone to go buy anything. I'm just explaining my thoughts. It's not a great use of money, especially because it's slow. So here is a tweet by one of the Avalanche founders or the Avalanche founder. Even fully collateralized fiat stable coins have DPEG. Yeah, we all know that, that's great. I have always been, and he said, yeah, algo staples are always subject to bank runs. And he's always said that algo staples are subject to destabilizing bank runs. The only mechanism that can defend against this is a strong active team that performs open market operations, which is true. I mean, we're starting to see that now with Luna and UST. Now, these are his thoughts from today or yesterday, depending on when you guys watch this. 
We need a decentralized stablecoin. This is so true. We can't have USDC. We can't have USDT. I know they're great. I know some people like them, but dude, they can freeze those assets and anyone can freeze them. If anyone can freeze them, you can't have DeFi with centralized stable coins. Just like people are looking at UST and they're like, oh man, it failed, it did this. What do you think is going to happen when USDC and USDT, they're all used in DeFi and the government just says, yeah, freeze them now and it's all frozen and DeFi is broken and you're holding a bunch of these stable coins and you're like, you can't sell it for Bitcoin because it's frozen and you were forced into KYC. How would you feel about something like that? Instead, with UST, you can at least get 50% back. So in either situation, with UST or USDC, if you aren't going to KYC, you actually just lose your money. Actually, with UST, you still can get some as we speak at the time of recording. There isn't room for a dozen, a half dozen, or even two algo stablecoins. The market where the biggest one wins and all the others lose. Right now, our largest algo stablecoin is UST. Even after this drawdown, it's still even bigger than DAI. So the one that is the largest and the biggest value and the most battle tested is the one that's going to win. Let that sink in. This is very true. How many times have UST been tested? I'm not saying UST is going to survive from this, but let's go and look at basis cash, iron finance, all the different other algo stablecoins and see where they came from. Who has the largest community so far? Now, I'm not saying there's not going to be another one that just comes up out of nowhere, but there was something that was created with Terra. So the TLDR of this whole entire thread that this guy made is that, look, it's the stablecoin that moves the fastest, that has the strongest community, and the one that's been battle tested is the one that's going to win. I want to leave you guys with this. Remember, the value proposition here is to create an asset whose backing store is decentralized and cannot be confiscated or frozen. A capable team is absolutely essential for this. Overall, the UST depegging played out exactly as we saw in past historical cases. Yes, like Iron Finance. Yes, like Basis Cash. And he says, I'm even more bearish on all copycats and bullish on UST once the dust settles down. So time will tell, we'll see what happens. This is kind of an overview of what kind of conspired and happened the past few days and what caused this and what was the issue and kind of, hey, I'm sorry. If you guys need some help, if you guys need someone to talk to, I'm here for you. Just reach out to me. You can leave comments below. I'll respond to your comments. Money is not everything. It's just a number. It's just a piece of paper. I want to go ahead and hit you guys with a couple of verses. This is in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 through 8. There's a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to uproot, a time to kill, and a time to heal, a time to tear down, and a time to build, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones, and a time to gather them, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to search, and a time to give up, and a time to keep, and a time to throw away, a time to tear, and a time to mend, a time to be silent, and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. Guys, be safe, be careful. Nobody said it was gonna be easy, but in my opinion, it's gonna be worth it. Keep your heads up, you only lose when you give up. Thanks for watching this KuCoin DigiDive. If you guys would like to see other videos on the KuCoin DigiDive, make sure you check out the one here, 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 and like somewhere there. We'll see you guys in the next one.